You can calculate velocity in volleyball by dividing the total distance object traveled by the time it took to travel in the same direction. The greater the velocity of the ball, the harder it is for your opponent to control it. You can measure the velocity of a volleyball player during their approach to hit. This approach can contain three or four steps of different distances and speeds. The velocity of the player during their approach is calculated by dividing the distance they traveled from the beginning of their approach to the end divided by the time it took for them to travel that distance. When a player serves the ball, the distance it traveled over the net divided by the time it took to travel there is its velocity. Acceleration can be calculated by dividing the change in velocity by the time it took for the object to begin and stop its motion. So the formula is change in velocity over time taken. In this acceleration graph, a volleyball player takes a four-step approach. The first step is the slowest step, accelerating very little on the second step. The third step accelerates greatly from the second, shown in the graph. The fourth and final step is slightly faster than the third. The acceleration of the approach continuously increases as the player prepares to hit. In volleyball, an example of a combination of forces occurs during a joust. During a joust, players from opposing sides of the net both go up to try to push the ball to the other side of the net. The stronger force will win. For example, if the player with the blue jersey applies a force of 10 newtons on the ball and the player in the red jersey applies a force of 7 newtons on the ball, the blue player will overpower the red player. The resulting net force will be 3 newtons going to the right from the blue player. He will win the joust because of his greater force strength. The strength of friction in volleyball is affected by how hard the object makes contact with the floor or with the ball and what types of surfaces are involved. An example of sliding friction occurs when a player wears knee pads when playing. They are able to slide easier and faster on the ground when they dive than when bare knees hit the ground. Knee pads reduce the friction with the ground because the fabric does not resist the floor. Bare knees, especially when sweaty, resist the floor and cause more friction. An example of static friction in volleyball is when the ball is resting in the player's hand about to be served. It must overcome this friction by the force of the player tossing the ball up. Fluid friction occurs in every volleyball rally. The ball is able to move in the air because of fluid friction. When the ball is served, the air resistance and gravity eventually overcomes the force of the serve causing the ball to come down to the opposing player's defense. The greater the surface area of the ball, the more it resists the air or fluid involved. The ball's surface area in volleyball doesn't change, so the air resistance doesn't change drastically from play to play. The volleyball is affected by gravity in this sport the most in every single play. Every time the ball goes up, it must come down because of gravity. When the ball is served, it has to come down on the other side of the net. When the ball is passed, it must come down in order for the setter to set it. When the ball is set to a hitter, it must come down in order for the hitter to hit it. When the ball is hit, it comes down quickly because of the force of the hit and because of gravity. An example of Newton's first law of motion in volleyball is when a player is serving. The ball is at rest when it is in the player's hand, getting ready to be tossed up. The force of the toss causes the ball to become in motion. The ball is then in motion until the force of gravity pulls it down or until the play is over.
An example of Newton's third law of motion in volleyball is when a player jumps off of the ground. The force from the feet is downward, which is the opposite as the force that comes upward from the floor. This is the opposite reaction of the jump. The equal reaction is the same amount of Newtons for the force from the feet and the force from the floor. The mass and velocity of an object are the two factors that affect an object's momentum. When the mass or velocity of the ball or player is increased, their momentum increases. For the club volleyball, when you turn 13, the ball gets heavier. This increased the momentum of the ball because its mass was increased. The momentum is also increased when the ball is served harder or faster because the velocity is increased. Kinetic energy occurs whenever the player or ball is moving. The video shown is of a player making her approach to hit and she has kinetic energy. An example of potential energy is when the ball is in the surfer's hand. It is still and has no motion but has the ability to move. Mechanical energy occurs when the potential energy of the ball is transferred into kinetic when it is served. The ball has potential when it is in the server's hand and transfers to kinetic when the player serves the ball.